Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to Soil Lab. Today we're going to do a video that really speaks to those of you who are gardening. We're going to compare two different soils. We're going to compare a fully organic soil or potting soil to a soil that's blended between organic and native soil in a 50-50 blend. With those two soils, we're going to be comparing three different organic fertilizer sources. We'll be comparing feather meal, blood meal, and a non-animal based source of soybean meal. So why did we do this study? Well, we did this study to see if we could find a similar release curve for a non-animal based organic. And we also did this to see just how that organic soil versus that blended soil change the release curves potentially uh, of these different organic fertilizer sources. So follow along and hopefully this data will help drive decisions in your garden. What are you, we good? Yeah, All right. Yeah, that sounds great, yeah. Just, Right, one taking it in my mind. All right. <laughs> so what did we do to conduct this study? Well, first we started off with a commercially available garden soil that you could get at a big box store. And we took that same potting soil or garden soil and blended it 50% by volume with a native silt loam soil here in our region. We added equal amounts of each of these soils to a series of trays. I've just got two out in front of me here, but we had a lab bench full of these. After we had those equal amounts of soil added, we added equal amounts of nitrogen as an organic fertilizer to each. So what rate did we use? We chose 100 pounds of nitrogen per acre. Now I know a lot of us in the garden don't think on a per acre basis, so what does that mean per 100 square feet for example? That's just below a quarter pound of nitrogen per 100 square feet. If we're thinking about how much total product that is, how much actual organic fertilizer we applied, that's somewhere between about two and three pounds of organic fertilizer as feather meal, blood meal, or soybean meal per hundred square feet. So it's a reasonable amount that we see commonly used in, in gardens. We added equal amounts of nitrogen as each of those three fertilizers to each of our soils. We kept those soils field moist. So we kept them moist, not wet. What would that feel like? If I were to grab a handful of that soil and squeeze it, I'd be able to get a couple drops of water out, but it certainly wouldn't be rushing through. So that should be about the optimal moisture level for our microorganisms to break down this organic fertilizer. The soil temperature in this study was right at about 62 degrees Fahrenheit throughout the entire duration of the study, which actually lasted for eight weeks or two months. And so that's a really good optimal soil condition. The results of this study would certainly be a little bit different if your soils were a little cooler or a little warmer than this, but this temperature we felt was a nice middle ground. As I mentioned, the study lasted for eight weeks. We took samples on weeks two, four, and eight to develop this nutrient release curve. Now let's dive into the data. So where we're gonna start first is with our potting soil or our fully organic, 100% organic soil, and our soybean meal. The fertilizer analysis for the soybean meal is a 7-1-2. So it's 7% nitrogen, 1% phosphate, and 2% potassium or potash. So it's a, it's a balanced fertilizer with a little bit of everything if you needed more than just the nitrogen. I was shocked to see that we actually had 64% of our nitrogen applied available at week two. So that is a really rapid mineralization or conversion of organic to inorganic available nitrogen happened rapidly. We can see at weeks four and eight that it was still mineralizing or still providing additional nitrogen. The line we see at the bottom of the graph here is that untreated control, that, that, that soil that received no extra fertilizer um, but was still getting watered regularly. So what's the takeaway on this first graph with this first treatment? It's that almost two thirds of the nitrogen in that soybean meal was made available just in the first two weeks in our fully organic soil. Let's see how that compares to our blood meal. Now this blood meal is 12% nitrogen and doesn't really contain much phosphorus or potassium. It's a 12 0, 0. As we look at that, we see the same trend, just with slightly more nitrogen mineralized or made available in those first two weeks. Here we see 75% of the nitrogen applied as blood meal made available in those first two weeks. Again, with still significant amounts being made available at weeks four and eight. 
With our feather meal, another 1200 fertilizer, we saw results that were almost identical to the blood meal results, with 73% of the nitrogen being made available just in those first two weeks. Now, we'll talk about the ferti fertility management considerations here in just a moment, but let's compare those same fertilizers and those same rates to this different soil, where we have 50% native soil and 50% organic. What we see with the soybean meal fertilizer is almost the inverse or the opposite of what we saw with our potting soil. We see a really slow release at the first two weeks with only 18% of our applied nitrogen being made available or mineralized. Then on weeks four and eight, we saw a pretty significant increase. And so in these, so in this 50-50 soil, the organic mix that you might be, that might be typical of your backyard garden in the ground, we saw a slower release of that nitrogen through time. And that certainly can affect how and when you fertilize with this. The question I had was, well, did the blood meal and the feather meal react similarly? And the answer is yes, they really did. With about 16% of that nitrogen made available in the first two weeks, with the vast majority being made available at weeks four and eight. So we had that slower release through time, honestly, a bit more of what I would have expected. Again, the feather meal reacted very similarly. The main difference being that it mineralized about a fifth or 20% of that nitrogen at week two, but continued that release through time with a nice upward trend in that availability. Well, what are the takeaways here? One of the main takeaways I have is that this 100% organic soil, this gardener potting soil, had a lot of biological activity. And what do we mean by that? When we were looking at the surface of this soil, we saw a lot of insect activity. We also saw some fungal growth. There was some, what we'd call mycelium, growing. It looked fuzzy and cottony. Well, if that was happening above the soil surface, we can only imagine what was happening below the soil surface and with all of our bacteria and fungi. So we think that that enhanced microbial activity, the bacteria and fungi in particular, mineralized or broke down this organic nitrogen much faster than in our 50-50 mixed soil. What does that mean? How does that affect um, how we might fertilize or the timing? Well, when we mineralize that nitrogen or convert that nitrogen from the organic to the available form rapidly, we need to be applying that fertilizer closer to the time when our plants need it. So we could use this as almost a spoon feeding uh, application where you would apply smaller amounts at close intervals to feed that plant. We would do that to avoid losing that nitrogen out of the root zone to leaching. So to avoid moving that nitrogen with the water out of the root zone. Another consequence of that heavier rapid mineralization could be that that free nitrogen would then get tied back up into more microorganisms. We call that immobilization. So it's made available and then made temporarily unavailable until those microorganisms themselves cycle. The 50-50 mix, the half native soil, half organic soil, saw what I would consider to be a more traditional release curve where it released about 15 to 20 percent of the available nitrogen in those first two weeks and then gradually more through time. We didn't see the same level of biological activity or insect activity or, or fungal activity in this as we did in the potting soil. So we think those microorganism populations were likely quite a bit lower. And so we saw slower mineralization through time, slower conversion of that organic nitrogen through time. In terms of comparing the fertilizers, the animal-based products to the plant-based products, so again, the feather and bl uh, blood meal to the soybean meal, saw very, very similar trends. We did see just a slightly lower amount of nitrogen uh, made available at week eight with the soybean meal compared to those two animal-based products. If your fertility philosophy leads you to want to use plant-based products as opposed to animal-based products, you'll be able to realize very similar nutrient release curves, especially in an organic or a mixed soil. Well, hopefully you found this information beneficial or useful, and it helps drive decisions in your garden. If you'd like to see more videos and more content like this, please be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification button. I'll see you in the lab.